The numbers are all starting to indicate that Kamala Harris is not performing nearly as well as the Democrats would have hoped, and it seems like it's a foregone conclusion at this point she's going to lose big time in November. Before we get into the story, I would like to ask for your help. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before I turn 40 at the end of the year in beginning in the beginning of December. So, click that subscribe button, share this video around, click the like, and leave me your comments. It all helps boost me in the algorithm, and it will help me grow. Now, from Breitbart News, Democrats fear campaign or fear Harris campaign could falter in post Labor Day push. Establishment Democrats remain concerned about prevailing um or sorry, preventing former President Donald Trump from completing the greatest political comeback in modern American history, even after President Joe Biden stepped aside for Vice President Kamala Harris. The concern spotlights Harris's lack of a post-convention bump and the September 10 presidential debate, which will force Harris to speak about her radical record and how she plans to address the nation's decline. Now, there are still rumors that she is arguing uh, against the muted microphones and may use that as an excuse to back out. We don't know for sure. However, there have been some uh, talks recently as of today claiming that Donald Trump is the one who's going to back out. It's not going to happen. Donald Trump won't back down from a debate with Harris. Not this close to the election. Uh, National and swing state surveys show that Trump and Harris are statistically tied. In polling on specific issues, however, Trump holds a sizable lead, suggesting Harris's so-called honeymoon stage was a sugar high. The honeymoon stage was also uh, misrepresenting uh, data in polls because the media wanted you to believe that Harris was more popular than she actually is. Basically, what I'm saying is the vast majority of them were straight out outliers used to try and manipulate opinion rather than reflect it. Uh, She's got luck, Democrat strategist Jim Manley told the Wall Street Journal. The question is, how long is it going to last? Well, it's already gone. There was supposed to be a giant convention bump. That didn't happen. In fact, her momentum was completely stifled by Kennedy the day after the convention ended. Uh, This election is far from over, Democrat strategist Donna Brazil told Politico, and technically she is correct because voting day is on November 5th, and you must get out and vote. Don't think that your candidate has it in the bag. If you don't go to the polls and cast your vote yourself and make sure it gets counted properly and legally, then you are going to be in for a disappointment. There's not a scenario here that's easy, Harris senior advisor David Plouffe told uh, the Associated Press. The pathway to beating Donald Trump, the pathway to 270 electoral votes for Kamala Harris is exceedingly hard but doable, and that's just a reality. Except that I'm even seeing reports that indicate Trump could potentially get up to 340-some-odd electoral votes this year. That is an absolute landslide of monumental proportions. Uh, Chief among Democrats' concerns is Harris's track record on the economy the number one issue in the 2024 cycle. 87% of Americans believe the Biden-Harris administration's policies have either hurt or had no impact on inflation, a Monmouth University poll found in June. We've got to win the economic argument. Populist Democrat Rep. Ro Khanna said during the Democratic National Convention, we've got to make the case that we are the party that's going to re-industrialize America and re- uh, re-energize the working and middle class. Except they haven't been able to do that in the last four years they've been in office. They are absolute failures. They are the party in power, and the economy is getting worse, not in spite of, but because of them. The economy is bad, specifically because Democrat policies are and always have been historically bad on the economy. Uh, Harris faces a conundrum on the economy and in particular on soaring costs, which have increased about 20 percent across the board since she took power back in 2021. Harris cannot campaign on the reduction of soaring costs without undermining the Biden-Harris administration's policies. But she must tout the administration's policies to validate her record and candidacy. She's in between a rock and a hard place. CNN's Dana Bash exposed Harris's conundrum during her pre her first pre-taped interview. Harris owned the Biden administration. Uh, record while she simultaneously blamed Trump for it, claiming basically that Donald Trump is still the president right now, you guys. The contradiction was stark, producing an outcome that forced Harris to tout her administration's policy to validate her candidacy, all while uh, she undermined her record and her candidacy. 
Not all Democrats appear worried about Harris's catch-22. Harris put the Democrats back in the game to where it's kind of a toss-up, Democrat pollster John Anzalone told the Associated Press. Post-Labor Day, when the bell rings, there is a battle for a slim universe, universe of you-can-call-them-anything-you-want persuasion voters, swing voters, independent voters, and it's pretty small. And that's where each uh, side gets a billion dollars, he said. Jen O'Malley Dillon, Harris's campaign manager, wrote in a campaign memo on Tuesday that Harris maintains several paths to victory. Mm, nope, don't know if there's, uh, well, we're going to move on beyond that particular joke. We maintain multiple pathways to 270 electoral votes and are growing strength across the types of voters who decide elections in every battleground, she said, because she's completely out of touch with reality, just like the candidate whose campaign she is running. It's going to be really bad for Harris, and it's going to continue to get worse. But the good news there is that that's good for the rest of the American people. People because you might actually be able to afford to feed your children again in the not too distant future. Till next time, thanks for watching.